Best evidence rule, the most misunderstood rule in the rules of evidence. What is the reason why it is misunderstood? Because it is the word best which makes it misunderstood. Uh, let me catch my breath, okay? Catch my breath. Whoa. The English language is beautiful. Catch my breath. Magandang English, pero mas rich ang Tagalog, Pilipino. May mga salita tayo na walang translation sa English. Bang sinabi mong sayang, wala naman direct translation sa English yun eh, sayang. Sayang means a regrettable loss. An American does not say, nahulog kanyang ice cream, hindi sasabihin, what a regrettable loss. We don't say that. Huh. Depending upon who the speaker is, there would be many ways. Okay. Oh, I am saying that the best evidence rule is the most misunderstood rule for one very simple reason. The word best makes it misunderstood. Kasi pag binasa mo lang ang salitang best and you are very literal on this and not legal, the word best, common wisdom, will tell us na pinakamagaling, pinakamaganda, pinakamataas, pinakasuperior. Get my point? Um, look at this. You heard this in court. Mr. X, do you know Mr. Y? Yes, sir. How do you know him? Well, he is the lessee of the apartment I own. Oh, so you have a contract of lease. Yes, sir. Objection, not the best evidence. The best evidence is the written contract of lease itself. The court says sustained. Wrong. When I mention there is a contract of lease, there is yet no reference to a document. Because the contract can be oral, the contract can be in writing. Do you follow what I'm saying? See, those are bad habits in the courtroom. It always happens. And now you know what it means when you hear something like that. You just listen and smile and as if you want to shrink in shame. Sumunod na tanong, halimbawa, is that lease an oral lease or a written lease? Yes, sir. Objection? Hindi pa rin. Document pa lang ang sinabi. Wala pa rin best evidence rule. Pero nagtanong, according to that written lease, how much is the monthly rental? Ayan, objection, not the best evidence. The application of the best evidence has been misapplied. Don't misapply it in the bar exams. The best evidence rule is only treated with dignity and with respect in the bar exams. It is not treated with dignity most often in court. Kapag nagpakita ng sirok ang isang tao, sisigaw agad ng not the best evidence, sigaw agad ng sustain. No! In fact, Section 3 tells you the application of the best evidence rule. Look at that. And the subject of inquiry or inquiry is the contents of the document. See, those are the elements. What's the subject of inquiry? The contents of what? Of a document. Therefore, documentary evidence. Because documentary evidences are offered as proof of their contents. The reason why it is misunderstood, I told you, is because of the use of the word best. Best. Had we followed the original wordings of the American rules, there would not have been a confusion. Because the original wordings of the American rules were this. Original document rule.
See? Kung niretain natin ang words na original document rule, walang confusion. Because the best evidence rule actually refers to a conflict between originals and secondary evidences. According to that rule, the original prevails over secondary evidences. Ngayon, ang ating name ay best evidence rule. Ang unang-unang pangalan niyan sa American jurisprudence was the original document rule. Mas madaling maintindihan yun. Original document rule. So, let's summarize the rule. When does the best evidence rule apply? When there is a documentary evidence and offered the subject of inquiry is the contents of that document. So, whenever you are confronted with the bar exams, think about that. Does the best evidence rule apply? The best evidence rule does not apply. Next paragraph, for the best evidence rule to apply, the subject of an inquiry must be the contents of the document. While there is a document, there is no inquiry as to its contents. To reiterate, the rule does not apply. Short, crisp, complete. The legal basis is there. So, when the best evidence rule apply, what is your duty? Your duty is to present the original. Yan. So, we go by degrees. Your duty is to present the original. Why are you supposed to present the original? Because it is reliable. This was a 250-year-old rule which started in England. Uh, evidence is an English rule borrowed by the Americans. And you know what happened. We borrowed. Your negotiable instruments law is not American. It's originally British or English. We borrowed. Your obligations and contracts, however, is Spanish. Your succession is Spanish. Your lupung tagapamayapa is original. Wala silang barangay tayo meron. They call it barangays, but they don't have it. I'm very proud of that. Extremely proud of lupung tagapamayapa. When I look at it, it's authentic Filipino. <coughs> Now, why are you supposed to present the original? It's reliable. You know, in England, it's like this. It happened. I read it, the story of how it happened. Uh, the magistrate was looking for the so-called bill of sale. Bill of sale. So what we have here, it's deed of sale, okay? And so the court said, Sire, where is your evidence that you are really the owner of 20 acres of land in Edinburgh? And he said, here, your honor, I have a bill of sale. So the court looked at it. Said, is this the one that was really signed by the seller and by you? Your Honor, these are just facsimiles. Well, we cannot use a term. They have their old term. Facsimile is a modern term. I copied and imitated our signatures. And I copied the bill of sale uh, faithfully. Why? Where is the original one? It was left at home. You know, Your Honor, before I could come here, I had to travel 25 miles by horseback. And I might be waylaid along the way by robbers. But there was no Robin Hood then, okay? In this story, because this is a true story. You know what the magistrate said? You know, I am not even sure if you copied it faithfully, I am not even sure. You might have committed a mistake. 
Or you might have changed some provisions when you copy this. I do not need this. I need the original. Bring it next time. He brought the original with a seal. That's the origin of the best evidence rule. The best is the original, not the one, not the copy you are bringing in court. See? And the reason is, there might have been mistake in copying. Fraud must have entered the picture. It's not reliable. So the best evidence is the original. Logical? Yes. Beautiful? Yes. Easy? Yes. But apply only the rule if the contents of the document is the subject of the inquiry. But are we supposed to strictly and absolutely adhere to the rule that you must present the original at all times? No. Our rules give us exceptions. A, B, C, D, etc. Your bar exams could be in the A and B. The others are merely codal. Can you present secondary evidences sometimes? Yes. But remember, they are only exceptional cases. And because they are exceptional cases, they are in derogation of the original rule. And so, the exceptions requirements must be faithfully complied with. Now, let us suppose here comes a question and answer in court. Mr. X, you just testified a few minutes ago or a few seconds ago that you executed a deed of sale with the defendant in relation to a one hectare land. Yes, sir. Could you present, could you show this to us for identification? Tanong ng lawyer. Yes, Your Honor. He fished out from his folder. Here it is, Your Honor. Is this the original or is it a copy? It is a copy, Your Honor. What happened to the original? It was lost, Your Honor. Now, during the formal offer of evidence, can counsel now present a secondary evidence on the basis of the question and answer? The answer is no. It is subject to an objection. Reason? The justification for presenting secondary evidence was not complete. It was not complete. Section 5 was not complied with. Is it 5? Yeah. Section 5 was not complied with on how to lay the basis for the presentation of a secondary evidence. Jurisprudentially, we talk about the terms. Jurisprudence says if you want to present secondary evidence, you must lay the basis for the presentation of secondary evidence. The word laying the basis is not found there. But it is a jurisprudential traditional term. Lay the basis. The other name for that in American jurisprudence is laying the foundation. Okay? But we prefer to use the California term, laying the basis. Now, in shortcut lingo, laying the basis means you justify why you cannot present the original. Yan. Only then... After justification, can you present a secondary evidence? What was the defect in that question and answer? Well, he simply said it was lost. There was even no explanation how it was lost. There was even no statement that it was duly executed. While it said it existed, there was no testimony. It was duly executed. <coughs> And there was no explanation that it was lost without bad faith on the part of the person offering the evidence. You see section 5. 
you have to remember the concept in section 5, laying the basis. Uh, listen to this. Where is the original mis was what what happened to the original? Well, by the way, Your Honor, uh, no, sir, we signed it. It was even authorized. But the notary public died. And everything in his possession was burned because he died when his house was burned. Oh, that's the notary public's copy. Where is your copy of the original? We only had one original, Your Honor. And we agreed to put it in a safety deposit box. Where? Metrobank. Oh, where is it? Well, Metrobank, Claro M. Recto, was hit by a series of lightning bolts. The bank exploded, including the deposit boxes. Look, was it lost without bad faith on his part? Oh, yes. That's for three to seven. 1174. No person shall be responsible for those events which cannot be foreseen or even if though foreseen are inevitable. Is it not? Okay. Was it duly executed? Yes. Later on, can you now present a copy in the formal offer? Yes, because the basis was already properly laid. Oh, that's common sense. I cannot stay here very long. Now, the other potential bar examination question is, you cannot present the original because it is in the possession of the adverse party. Now, before you could present the secondary evidence, what are you supposed to do? You must also show that an original exists. You must also show that it was duly executed. But you must show that he has been given a reasonable notice to produce the original, but he refused or failed to do so. That's laying the basis. And when the basis is properly laid, you can now present secondary evidence. But can you present any secondary evidence? The answer is no. There is an order in the presentation of secondary evidence in Section 5. The copy first. If no copy, recital of its contents in some authentic document. And the third is testimony of witnesses. Remember? Testimony of witnesses could be a secondary evidence. It's the last in the hierarchy of secondary evidence, but the first is a copy. See, those are little things, but they become big in MR exams. But you must also know the meaning of an original. You go back to section 4. Original, orig. Okay. Were you born when we were still using typewriters? I was born when I was a young lawyer because our secretary types very slow and I type very much faster than our secretary. I use typewriters. God, if you make a mistake, you erase each and every page. You put the white out thing, the white thing, or you erase it. Well, the keys are the same as computers. Now, I typed an affidavit. Carbon paper at the backs. That is something I was not able to master even after years. There were times when the imprint in the carbon paper would be at the back of the first page. Oh, yeah, there were times, despite my years of typing, it's putting the carbon paper, which is my Waterloo. It's my Achilles heel. And there was a time I was so frustrated, we had to file an answer with a counterclaim. That day, I, oh, I have made several mistakes. I threw the typewriter on the floor. It's at home right now, part of my memento when the law office was disbanded. Oh, I typed affidavits. The first page with six carbon papers. Okay? After that, the affiant signed them one by one after I typed. Which is the original? Answer, all of them are originals. All of them have the same effect as originals. Let's now go to your generation. We have laser jet printers, okay? Now, I typed an affidavit, one page, 
printed it in a laser jet printer, psh, it's already out. Then you signed it. After signing it, it was photocopied five times. How many originals are there? There's only one. The others are not originals. Okay? Now, you printed only one. Without signing it, you copied it four times. After copying it, you signed everyone one by one simultaneously. How many originals? Several originals. You want to sue someone for libel based on a libelous remarks in his newspaper column. You are now offering in court the libelous column. Are you going to the office of the Philippine Daily Inquirer and ask them, Alin dito ang unang lumabas na dyaryo? No. All the newspapers you can buy from Batanes down to Hulu or Sulu are originals. Because they were made on the same occasion. Oh, by the way, I was talking about the bar exams. Iho, can I borrow your bar you're going to answer this now. Okay. Uh, I remember it was actually Ace Verhel was that mentioned here. That actor who died. But uh, his name was used. This is his case. But his name was not used fully. They used an old case of People versus Tandoy because it's a similar situation. So... Uh, this is an old bar exam, but this is the best question so far on the best evidence rule. Because many questions in the best evidence rule were asked very simply and in a very... Uh, ...non-cerebral way. But this is a beautiful one. It's simple. It's a 1994 bar exam. I'm trying to look for it. It... Uh, it should be number 9. 231. So you're going to answer this now. I remember this was 5 points. Uh, but this UPLO Center document does not say it's 5 points. I'm looking for it. Could you uh, wait for a little while? Yes. Uh, I'm trying my best to find it. It's 1994, number 9. You know why I'm using my right hand and I only one hand. It's difficult. Hands are so important in all aspects of life. Okay, look at this. Here is now question number nine. 1994 bar exams. The simplest but the best formulated case problem in the best evidence rule. Are you ready? Game na ba kayo? Oh, wala na yata yung program na yun, no? At the trial of Ace for violation of the Dangerous Drugs Act, the prosecution offers in evidence a copy, a photocopy of the marked, marked 100 peso bills used in the buy bust operation. Okay? So, anong evidence? Photocopy ng pera na nakuha sa buy bust operation. Ace objects to the introduction of the photocopy on the ground that the best evidence rule prohibits the introduction of secondary evidence in lieu of the original. Okay. Yakang yaka. I could see your smiles. Some are hidden, but I could see how your eyes smile. Oh, smile. Is it? Yes, her name is Smile. Okay. The first question is not about the best evidence rule. First question is, very simple. Is the photocopy real or object evidence? 
Or is it documentary evidence? Yan. Yun ang unang tanong. Yun daw, photocopy ng bills. Ay documentary evidence or simply object evidence? Obviously, kahit walang sinasabi rito, it is only an object evidence. Because obviously, it is offered to prove that money changed hands in the transaction. Kaya nga may sale, buy bust eh. You buy and you bust. So, kung may buy bust, may buy, may consideration to prove that there was consideration, to prove that there was money. So, it has nothing to do with the contents or what is written in the money. Let's see the answer of the UP Law Center. Was I a member of this group? 1994? No. I was busy working in an American law firm at that time. Because I had to have medical attention because of the one I told you yesterday. Okay? Answer? You want me to read? Yeah, you're waiting with bated breath. Answer, ladies and gentlemen, the photocopy of the March bills is a real or an object evidence and not a documentary evidence. Ang ayoko lang sa sagot nito ay reason. Mali ang reason eh. Because the March money, the March bills are real evidence. Typist nito, tinamad kompletohin. Because the March bills were not offered to prove the contents of the bills. Dapat ganun. Hindi yung... Ulitin natin ha. The photocopy of the March bills is real or object evidence, not documentary evidence because the March bills are real evidence. So in other words, para mong sinabing siya ay matapang because he is brave. In other words, when you define something, there must be a definience. There must be a definiendum. Both of these are definience, no definiendum. Definience, the thing you define. Definiendum, the definition of that, what you are defining. That's all right. Never mind. Never mind. The examiners are not as strict as that. See? Okay. Next question is very important. Is the photocopy admissible in evidence even if there is an objection that it is not the best evidence? Anong objection? Not the best evidence. Photocopy kasi. Unang tanong, object, documentary. Sagot, object. Sumunod na tanong, maganda Is the photocopy admissible in evidence? Yes. Because the evidence is object evidence. The best evidence rule does not apply to object evidence. Basahin natin ang sagot ng UP Law Center. Yes, the photocopy is admissible in evidence because the best evidence rule does not apply to object or real evidence. Ah, uh, yun niya. Ang kinote nila ay people versus tandoy. Para naman hindi halatang si Ace Verel. Hmm. Magandang kasong kinote nila. This is a beautiful case. 192 is kra. 28. Oh, nakuha nyo? Nakuha nyo yung tanong. Ganyan lang naman ang bar. Huwag kayong kabahan. Pwede nyong itap to, magsisiksikan kayo sa top 10. Ganito lang naman ang antas ng tanong sa bar. Ang problema lang sa bar ay minsan nalilito ka, hindi mo makuha kung paano interpret ang tanong. See? Pero oras na na-interpret mo, papasok ang leksyon, papasok ang principle sa isip mo. Kaya di mo mo, anong gusto ng examiner dito? Ang isasagot mo, hindi yung gusto mo. Ang isasagot mo, yung gusto na examiner, kahit hindi ka pa pumapayag sa gusto niya. Sagutin mo lang. Talagang talo ka sa examiner pag kinontra mo siya. Ang daming matatalino na hindi pumapasa. Paano? 
Okay? Ang sinasagot nila, yung gusto nila, hindi yung gusto na examiner. Palaging ganito, what does the examiner want from me? Ah, hindi ko alam. Lakat ng alam ko ay ibigay ko. Ay, babagsak ka. Bakit? Hindi ka responsive. Gaya ng kaibigan ko, bumagsak. Ila, bakit? Eh, disqualified ako sa remedial. Oh. Kasabay kong kumuha ng bar noong 1981. I belong to bar 1981. Ilan ang score mo sa remedial? Oh? 36 lang. Ari, takan-taka ako. Ba't ako bumagsak? Eh, ang dami kong alam. Ang dami kong isinulat. Ilang pages? 36 pages. Ay, di binigyan ka ng one point bawat page. Kasi, kahit hindi tinatanong, nilalagay. Hindi ganun. Hindi ganun ang bar. Kung anong tanong, siyang sagot. Is the contract voidable? The contract is not voidable. For a contract to be voidable, uh, one party's consent must be vitiated or one party's consent or one party is incapacitated to give consent. Ganun ang argument mo. Hindi yung, it is not voidable but resistible. Ay, mali yun. Ang tanong lang sa iyo, voidable, di doon ka lang sumagot, di sabihin mo kung bakit hindi voidable. Tandaan niyo yung mabuti yan. Meron na ba kayong nahandang opening statement? Huwag niyong gayahin yung isang estudyante ko nung unang panahon, ha? Ang opening statement niya, sa lahat ng labing limang tanong, pare-pareho, kaya ang comment ko, baguhin mo naman. First sentence, first number, settle this the rule. Second, settle this the rule. Three, settle this the rule. Pagod na pagod na ako ng settle this the rule. Hanggang labing lima, settle this the rule. Sabi ko, change it. You have to have an opening sentence for every number. Sumunod na quiz. It is a basic doctrine. It is a basic doctrine. Huwag, ibaybahin mo. Huwag naman kayo, may isang examiner na nagsabi sa akin, may gumamit daw ng, it is a hornbook rule. Oh, tawa siya ng tawa. Yung hornbook, wala tayo niyan. Ang hornbook niyan ay sa Amerika lang, sa California, hornbooks. Yung mga hornbooks, yung mga basic books na mga horns. <laughs> wala tayong hornbooks. Okay. So, nakuha nyo na. Ha? So, anong gagawin mo? Present the original unless you cannot. Alam nyo, sir, can you, can you summarize the best evidence rule? Oh, simple. When there is a document and the subject of inquiry is the contents, you present the original. But if you cannot present the original, you have to justify why you cannot present the original. This justification is called laying the basis. And if already you can lay the basis, you can present the original. What originals can you, what secondary evidence can you present? Copy, recital, testimony of witnesses. That's it. Now, how do I lay the basis? I look at section 5, section 6, section 7, blah, blah, blah. That's it. You're prepared for the next. Okay, the next rule that applies to a documentary evidence is the so-called parole evidence. Do not put an E. Because if you put an E, you will go to the domains of political law. It's not parole, but it's parole. Okay, no E. I see that in many examinations. E. Okay. Iba yung parole sa parole, iba rin yung parole. Pampas ko na yun. Okay. You know, dito lang sa ating bansa, ang parole evidence ay nilagay sa best evidence rule. Ay, nilagay sa evidence. Uh, in this instance, we are very original. I have never seen a Western country using parole evidence rule, pushing, putting it in evidence. It is part of contract law in other countries. Contracts, parole. In fact, the origin of the parole evidence rule is actually contract law. Now, could you look at Section 9? 
Uh, section 9, Parole Evidence Rule, has reference to agreements, is it not? Agreements, contracts. But there is only one kind of document that is not actually a contract, but is deemed to be an agreement only for the purpose of the parole evidence rule. And that is a will. Will. See? You see that in section 9, for purposes of the parole evidence rule, a will is an agreement. But a will is not an agreement for any other purpose. You get my point? Okay. Now, do not apply the parole evidence rule if the contract is still in the oral stage. Because the parole evidence rule applies to a documentary evidence. And if it is oral, there is no document. The parole evidence rule simply means this way. When the parties have decided to put their agreement in writing, and when the issue is what are the terms of the agreement? What you are supposed to do is simply take the writing, look at it intently, read it. Because the only evidence of the agreement is the writing itself because there is a presumption that everything the parties agreed upon are in that document. The next is the parole evidence now. Do not look outside the writing. Do not look outside the writing. This looks like a traffic sign. Okay. Do not look outside the writing. Look only in the writing. If you look outside of the writing for evidence, as to what the writing is saying, you are looking at something parole. You are looking at something extraneous to the writing. You are looking at something outside of the writing. You are not supposed to look outside the writing. You are not supposed to look to other things outside of the writing. You are not supposed to ask for his testimony. You are not supposed to ask another writing or look at it look at that very same writing that is parole evidence rule simple did you memorize no did you understand yes see that's how to study law without really trying so originally in the history of this parole means something extrinsic outside parole means something outside well it may be oral or written but it is outside the writing what are you supposed to look at only this are you going to ask a person about the contents of that no he is parole are you going to look at another document that was not cut properly and in the proper size no because they are parole. They are what you call evidence aliondi. Meaning outside, extrinsic evidence. Don't look at them. Only look at this. Kung siya ay misis ko, siya lamang dapat kong tingnan, siya lamang dapat kong asikasuin. Pag siya ang tiningnan ko, siyang inasikaso ko, siya ay parol. Okay, di alam niyo ng parole. Okay, taas natin ang antas ng ating talakayan. At anong ibig sabihin talaga? Ang ibang ebidensya that modifies the contents of the writing, that adds to the writing, that explains the writing, disregard them. Because they have nothing to do with the writing. If it contradicts the writing, don't consider it. If the writing says 1 million, and he says, hindi, 500,000 lang talaga eh. Nagkamali lang dyan, doon lang. Do not consider it. 
Because you have to look at the writing only. It contains, the rep it is the repository of the agreement. It is the memorial of the agreement. Because the writing is more reliable than any other testimony and than any other writer na writing. Nakalagay, five million ang price. Sabi niya, hindi, nag-usap kami kanina, oral eh. Three million na lang. Pagdating sa korte, ang five million ang mayamayani. Kasi yung kanya sinabi, parol. Get my point? Pero sir, pwede ba nating batikusin ang writing? Pwede ba nating mag-present ng evidence na contrary sa writing? Oh yes, pwede. Ito ang parole evidence rule, napakagandang rule, pero itong rule na walang kangipin-ngipin, wala kang marinig sa korte na objection parole. Bakit? Alam ng lahat ng abogado kung paano iwasan ang objection dito. Okay. Nakalagay sa kontrata natin, 10 million. Dinimanda mo ako to collect 10 million. Pinagdidiinan ko, 6 million lang eh. So, pagdating ko sa pleading ko, I will put it in issue in the pleading that the contents of that writing are not accurate. It does not contain the true agreement of the parties. I must put that in my answer. If I put it in issue in the pleading, I can now present parole evidence even if it contradicts what the writing says. Or I say the writing is invalid. There was a mistake. Basta I put it in issue in the pleading. The key word is put in issue in the pleading. You get my point? Yan. In other words, sa isang madaling pamamaraan, para mo maiwasan ang objection sa parole evidence at para ka makapagpakita ng parole evidence, batikusin mo ang kasulatan sa pleading mo. Yan. Put it in issue. Pag hindi mo binatikos, hindi mo makukontra ang writing sa direct exam. Or, you cannot present evidence contrary to the writing. Do you get my point? Huh? Okay. Ito ang complaint. Nagsasabing 10 million. Wala akong sinabi sa answer. Contra dyan. Pagdating ng trial, nagpapakita ako ng ebidensya na talagang usapan namin 7 million. Objection, objection, parole. Sabi ng court, nalimutan basahin ng pleading. Was it put in issue in the pleading na 7 million lang at yung 10 mali? Wala. Okay. Objection sustained. Kasi hindi mo binatiko sa pleading mo. Do you see the words there? Put in issue? Linyan yan. Yan ang keyword. Ano ang pwede mong maipakita? Yung mga bagay na naka-enumerate, is it not? Na merong intrinsic ambiguity, mistake or imperfection in writing, the agreement is not valid, it does not... Uh, reflect the true intention of the parties and that there is a new or subsequent agreement. Yan. Lahat ng mga naka-enumerate na yan ay sabihin mo sa pleading mo, mamili ka ng isa na applicable sa case mo. Or sabihin mo, sinabi nga 10 million, pero sabi sa answer mo, 10 million yan nakasulat, pero pinapirma lang ako dahil tinutukan ako ng baril sa ulo. So it does not really reflect my true intention. Oh, yun. Then you can prove something else. Even if it is parole. Oh, nakuha nyo na? Ah, by the way, sir, hindi ba ito best evidence? Hindi. Ang best evidence ay ganito. Kung gusto mong tanungin ang laman ng kasulatan, ipakita mong original. Yan, yan ang best evidence. Ang parole evidence ay, kung gusto mong malaman ang pinag-usapan natin, tingnan mo ang kasulatan. Yun ang parole. Pero ang kasulatan na tingnan mo ay yung original. Yun ang best evidence rule. Tingnan mo ang kasulatan, parol. Original na kasulatan, ha? Best evidence rule. Oh, yun, yun. Eh, wala akong original, eh. Sagot mo, I delay the basis. Oh, nalay ko na ang basis. Oh, pwede ka nang mag-secondary evidence. Oh, may copy ka? Wala. May recital ka in some other authentic document? Wala. Oh, itestify mo na lang. Oo nga, pero nalimutan ko. Ay, problema mo na yun. Hmm. Si yan ang istorya ng rule. Anong napansin nyo? No sweat. Okay. 
In sections 10 to 19, sa Rule 130, basahin nyo yan. Yan ay interpretation lang. Kung baga sa ano, yan ay statutory construction. Since 1913, walang tanong dyan sa bar. Misplaced yan eh. Dapat yan ilagay sa contract law eh. Interpretation of documents. Pero read it just to give you what? To give you what? Self-confidence. Kahit hindi, tanong, sige lang. Magagamit nyo yan when you become lawyers. Hmm. Okay. Ang susunod na concept sa bar exams na pwedeng itanong ay sa witnesses. Yan, witnesses. Sa witnesses na ba kayo? Yes. Section 20. Yan. When you talk about witnesses, what evidence is involved? Primarily, testimonial evidence. Yan. I am a person, for instance, who does not believe in God. I am the high priest of a church duly registered with the National Library called Charts of Satan. That's not true, okay? Don't look at me that way. I notice your eyes rolling and looking at me. You were aghast. That's not true. Am I qualified as a witness even because of my religion, despite my religion? Yeah. My religious beliefs has nothing to do with my qualifications. I am testifying in behalf of my son who was accused of multiple rape and multiple murder. Am I a qualified witness? Yes, my interest in a case has nothing to do with my qualifications. I am testifying and my political belief is the entire government and country must be abolished. And after abolishing it from the ashes of the old, a new government like a phoenix will rise. So, destroy everything. That's my political belief. Am I qualified to be a witness? Yes, my political beliefs and opinions have nothing to do with my qualifications. The basic qualifications are, number one, can I perceive? And in perceiving, can I communicate my perception? Yes, I am qualified. But there is one qualification that is not there. You know, the rules, they hide the others. And the qualification which is not there is in another provision which is not even directly said as a qualification. You see how secretive this rule is? You look at section 1 of rule 132 and you will see there an additional qualification. Now look at it, section 1 of rule 132, that is another qualification. But it is not mentioned directly as a qualification. Try to look at it, let's engage in mental calisthenics. There is a qualification. You must take an oath or an affirmation before you testify. Plus, the qualification is not the words open court. Okay? Kahit may shall dyan na una. <laughs> Di ba may shall? <laughs> okay. Pero hindi yung open court. Ah, alam niyo kung bakit? May sumagot sa akin sa exam. Eh. The following are the qualifications of witness. Can perceive, can communicate his perception, and open court. Wow. Okay. Minus one ka. <laughs> hmm. Dapat tu kaya lang natawa ako. Yung one, bonus for making me happy that day. Uh, see that? Okay. Now, take an oath or affirmation. See? Uh, why do you include affirmation? Because there are people, because of their religious beliefs, and they are, some of them are very, very... Uh, conscious about this and they are very honest about this. Now, 
sa religion nila ay bawal mag-take oath. You cannot swear. So instead of swearing, you say, I affirm. Ganun din, pati yung president ng Philippines, yung oath, hindi naman kailangang oath eh. Hindi yung I swear. America, ganun din, I swear. Siyempre, kasi hiniram natin yun eh. So, I affirm. Hindi yung I swear. Thou shall not wear, swear for me. See? Number one commandment of the Lord. Okay? I affirm. Look at this. Kunyari, ganito ang sitwasyon, ha? Did you see the killing? Yes, sir. Do you remember the killing? Yes, sir. Can you tell us? Yes, sir. Okay. Take your oath. No, sir. Take an affirmation. No, sir. He cannot testify. See? Okay, are you willing to take an oath? Oh, yes, sir. How many times, sir? Only one. Oh, I thought I could give you ten oaths. Okay. Ten oaths. Did you see the killing? Yes, sir. Do you remember what you saw? No, sir. Oh, he's not qualified. Because if he does not remember, he cannot communicate what he does not remember. Alam mo, sa original American rule, ganito yan eh, tatlo ang ano nakasulat. He can perceive... He has memory of his perception and can communicate. Tayo binawasan yung pangalawa. Kasi daw, implied na yun, you cannot communicate what you cannot remember. Oh, okay, okay na. Siyempre, gusto rin nating maging original sa pangungopia. Okay na yun. <laughs> oh, this is all American. This is the federal rules of evidence. Binago lang natin yung terms, pati definition sometimes. Pero meaning pareho. Now, <clears throat> Mr. X, did you see the killing? No, sir, but someone told me. Ah, you are not qualified. Why? You did not perceive. Okay, you did not perceive. And what does Section 36 tell you of Rule 130? Tingnan nyo nga. Magkakabit yan, pero magkakalayo, is it not? Okay, what does it say? Does the rule say you can only uh, testify on something that you have a product of your own perception and not through the perception of another? It tells you that. Now, now let's go back to that church that we mentioned. You know, I cannot mention it now. You know what the church is, the one I mentioned earlier in my example. I am the high priest of the church of? Well, you mention it, okay? It will not affect my qualifications, but in high probability, what it will affect would be my credibility. My qualifications are not affected, but my credibility. Testifying for my son will not affect my qualifications. It could affect my credibility. My religious beliefs, invoking, let's say, anarchy, my political beliefs, Credibility will be affected, but not my competence as a witness. Okay. You know, before going to something else, since the rules are not disarranged, we have to talk about the basic matters about witnesses. Not in Rule 130, but in Rule 132. The basics. So you have to go to Rule 132 whether you like it or not. We have no choice but to look at them. Logically arrange. Okay, you see the rights and obligations of the witnesses there, is it not? In Section 3. So, you will notice we mentioned that yesterday when we talked about contempt. Is a witness obliged to answer a question even if his answer would tend to subject him to a claim or a liability? Mr. X, it is not true that you paid the debt. You still have not paid it. Answer, I refuse to answer. Can the court tell him, hey, you answer whether you paid or not? No, Your Honor, over my dead body. I'll just sit down here. Oh, can the court order him? Yeah, the court could even cite him in contempt. 
But I told you, if the answer would tend to open him up to a criminal liability or liability for an offense, you cannot compel him because that will now fall within the ambit of the right against self-incrimination. Is it not? Yeah. Because there is now a criminal penalty involved. Okay. Uh, yes, there is something, because I remember the Simpson case in 1994 <clears throat> in America. But let me talk about this. I want you to remember your basic rules in political law, okay? In constitutional law. The right against self-incrimination of a witness is different from the right against self-incrimination of an accused. In the exercise of his right against self-incrimination, the accused can refuse to be a witness. The accused can refuse to testify. That is covered by his right against self-incrimination. But an ordinary witness who is not an accused cannot refuse to sit on the witness stand. If the court orders him to sit on that stand and he refuses, he could be cited for contempt. You look at section 1 of rule 71 for a while. Do you see something there about direct contempt of Rule 71 on witnesses? Did you see it? Ah, oh, Levi, could I see yours? Where are you smiling, Levi? Ah, uh, you are salbahi. Okay, now, now look. Did I tell you the right citation? Refusal to be sworn as a witness, refusal to answer as a witness. But if he disregards, by the way, this refusal must be in court. Get my point? It's in the presence of the court. Because if it is refusal to obey, a subpoena duly served to him, it is not direct contempt. It is indirect. Because he is not refusing an open court. He is refusing at home. The court is far. You look at section 3 of the same rule and look for it. I cannot find it. It is in section 3 on indirect contempt examples. Uh, Levi, pakehanap. But it is somewhere at the end of the enumeration. It could be F, it could be G. But my guess is letter F of section 3. Yan na lang, ikaw na lang. F, F, yeah, okay. Refusal to obey a subpoena duly served. Yan, indirect on them. Now, a witness who is not an accused, if he wants to invoke his right against self-incrimination, must wait for the question. Then he will say, I refuse to answer, right against self-incrimination. Ayan. Pero yung accused, ay hindi pwedeng piliting umupo. Pero itong witness, upo ka. Maghintay ka ng tanong. See? Were you a conspirator in the killing of Mr. X? I refuse to answer. Did you hide the weapon that was used in the killing? I refuse to answer. He cannot say, I will refuse to answer all future questions. No, he has to wait. Kung baga sa civil procedure yun, general denial, hindi specific. Okay? Question by question. The accused, accused, you sit down, you testify. <laughs> no. Right against self incrimination. Is it correct? Yeah. Okay. It's 12 30 according to my watch. I think this is right, is it not? 
Yes. <laughs> Even if it is not, you say yes. We still have three minutes. Okay, I'll see you again, children, at 2 o'clock, 2.15, okay?